Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. The biggest gob in sport. <laughs> we say the things on here. And over YouTube. As. As. Plural S. Dare say. Isn't that right? You know what? I love this chair. Stig. How are you doing? Thank you for your kind words, Stiggy. I bet you sat at home, aren't you, in in your swanky pad, eh, with no garden, in your swanky penthouse, with your expensive, uh, whatever it is you drink, wine and your cheese and your little vine tomatoes, a bit of sea salt on Stig. Make sure you get extra mature cheese, Stig. Extra mature cheddar. Cathedral's the best. Hope you're well, Stig. Uh, well, we bring the month to a close now. January the 31st, is it? Yeah. And this is video 100. Uh, the members area ones are done. They're full production ones. They're not members area. That's for the fortunate ones. Okay. Sorry for the unfortunate ones. Who haven't got a job and are not on the members area. Tough times ahead, isn't it? But... Some good stuff on there. Uh, first things first. Found these. Gavin McDonald, these are your gloves that you knocked Lee Wood out on when you put it when you sent him to Button Moon. I don't think it's fair that I have these gloves. Steffi given me for my 46th birthday. And uh, I think that uh well he says they're your gloves. I haven't even checked if they are, but it must be because they say eight on them, eight. Uh, give me these for my 46th birthday. That was when you were hanging out back of me, Steffi, wasn't it? We know why, don't we? <laughs> hey. We'll get to Porky, we'll get to Big Ron. We'll get on a Big Ron show. We'll smoke it with some gloves. So, I remember speaking to Frotch a while ago about stuff like this, um, bits and bobs, and he's like, you know, I like, you know, you like, the fighters like to have like stuff from great nights and that, don't they, and things like that, because Brotcher's gum shield uh, that he had specially made for Groves fight got stolen out of his uh, dressing room at Wembley. Uh, so, Gavin, if you get in touch with me, these are here for you, mate. All right, you can have them. Uh, I've used them. I have used them. But uh, the bang on, really good gloves. So that's that one out of way. Uh, Few questions in regarding me saying that uh, oh you're a bit harsh on people down south porky, especially people from Essex. Uh, how dare I? How dare I have an opinion on people down there in La La Land? Uh, I don't know. Russell, Russell, do your family eat steak up north? Uh, no, we eat uh, beans and uh, sausages in a tin. You know, I don't know what people think about us up in North, but I, I remember being down there in Essex. I'm not going to say what we're with, but uh, some jokes were like, I don't know, some guy in a Range Rover 12 plate. Oh, that's a nice Range Rover, that over there. It looks like some farmer. The fucking farmer. That looks all right, though. What, a 10 year old Range Rover, top at rain. Farmer. 10 year old that kind of mentality so for all we know it could have had 20,000 mile on clock a brand new one could have had 200,000 on clock or a two year old one so I think that people have got the wrong impression of us in the north you know northern monkeys and southern fairies is it a north south divide I don't know but uh, I know this much they're setting people on here in a couple of weeks from down there, so and they seem nice people. So maybe not everybody's like that. So we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Maybe we need to start looking at uh, people around as our friends and that when they're coming out with things like that and wearing one thousand pound trainers. Steffi Bull, we've got about ten pair or nine pair of trainers, thousand pound a pop. Them the Boutons. they look like spaceships. They're embarrassing. Whatever happened to just a pair of Adidas? Hey, Puma are comfy. I like Puma at the moment, but 
I've tried all sorts of trainers, but if I had 50 million in bank, I wouldn't pay a bag of sand for a pair of trainers. And I go through white trainers like you can never imagine. And I just think it's, I don't know, what's it all about that? Hey, with the tight polo neck t-shirts and sleeve tattoos and they've had a bit of juice down and five foot nine, 14 stone, can't fight for toffee. You get the teeth around the nose and squeal like pigs. But uh, no, it's not for me that carry on down there. It's fake. It's fake. The book here still mob. <laughs> fake. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So no, we're not all farmers up here, but yeah, there is a lot of fields. This is where I live, but we're not all farmers, all right? Gentlemen or gentlemen who keep going on about these, I've had these about 15 years. Look, okay, there's a pocket on it inside as well, yeah. Uh, it's a night one, this. All right, yeah, I can't really see. Yeah, yeah. No, they're all right. Uh, I didn't even know I had them. I think, uh, I'm not sure if the blue one went my mum's ages, but they're, they're easy to get stuff done, aren't they? You can get a lot done in them and you're not over, why am I? I see Flex in one all the time. I thought, sure I had one of them. I had a couple. So they're quite handy, aren't they, really? They're all right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, somebody said Nike Gillette. I don't know what that is. I thought Gillette was a shaver, isn't it? So, I don't know, but... No, cheap as chips, aren't they? Well, they were. Might have been about 60, 70 quid back in the day. But uh, I recommend them. I recommend them. I'm not going to rip it and uh, make out I'm boy next door like the white rhino because that one he had on. He's still got it. Have you? White rhino, have you still got that one? Didn't see you this morning either, white rhino. Another day you've not been jogging. Like I said, shave your hair, have a shave, get your feet done. Have a massage, get weighed, have a good hot bath, no trainers, no socks on, no tracky. Write your weight down and go for a run and start again. You're not going to do it, are you? You're going to walk around like Wazel Gummidge on your phone on treadmill going slow. I've heard. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Uh, don't let it pass you by, David. Don't get to 35 and go, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Don't keep on it, yeah. Because you have got ability, but trying to get you going, it, it, it's becoming hard work, isn't it? It's becoming hard work. Uh, another thing about people down south, avocado on toast with no butter and poached eggs and black coffee, 15 quid in Epping Forest at them caps. Who wants to pay that? You know, uh, can I just have beans on toast? Yeah, okay. Here's your bread. Butter in like a pot cup and a pot cup with beans. How's that? Beans on toast. You have tomatoes on toast. So they bring you a tomato, put that on your toast. Plum tomatoes out in the tin poured onto bread so it's soggy, easy digesting. You don't even know what beans on toast or tin tomatoes on toast is down there. Do they even do a full English down there now? I'm not so sure, but then again, us farmers in the north, you know, we trek like God knows what I know when we go down there. But let me say this. They don't seem to be winning any Premier League titles down there, do they? Pop, pop, bang on that one. Now your Arsenals and your Tottenham's, what are they doing? What are they doing? Tottenham, the richest club in the UK. No debts. Richest club in the UK. Can't buy a title or a trophy. So it is what it is. You know, I don't see any dogs in pubs down there either. But we get tied with that, don't we, up here? We, uh, we whip it and your flat cap and your barber coat. Yeah, so we know what they think about us up here in the north, don't we? We're like some on the bottom of the shoe, aren't we? This is what it is, isn't it? Hey. Uh, Eddie Hills has piped up on it. Eduardo. Eduardo Hills. Hey, what what is he on? What is Eduardo? What is Eduardo on? Hey, what is he on? Rubbish on the top of here. What is he on? John Ryder with tough, durable, and plucky. Hey, 
Ok. <laughs> ok. Poor John Ryder, eh? We managed to get, we managed to nick him a few quid at the end of his career. Is that what it's all about? Nick him, nick him a few quid. The man's not got a belt to his name. He leaves boxing as a loser, but with money in bank. I don't get that. Is that a cop out for John Ryder's career? No area English, British, Commonwealth, European, and world title. If he retires now, he's got a few houses to rent out. That's it. Is that like Dave Allen? He's got a couple of houses to rent out. You know, here. But no belt. Uh, it's failure. It's absolute failureness. And you've got Gavin McDonnell and his brother. Look how it ended up for them. They won everything, haven't they? Both of them, more or less. Gavin I didn't get a world title, but he challenged. And the other one won everything, didn't he? Beat five world champions along the way. Jamie. Few wrong turnings. Divorce, legal people, politics behind the scenes. They give you it and they take it back. And I feel for them kids. I feel for them because they're nice lads, but hey ho, the promoters are still earning, aren't they? They'll still be here. You'll still be ponting a living, won't you, Steffi? Mark McDonald's a plastering. Hey. Hmm. Caldwell, aka Bombay Dave, you'll still be getting a living. Won't you? When Jordan Gill's washing cars for a living. You know. Eddie going on about Crusher headlining on the strip. Everything's on the strip, but you're talking about it, the strip, like it's Mike Tyson or Mayweather Knights. Yeah, he's headlining against some waste man who's been inactive, very inactive. That's what you're doing. And you're going on about 200 people, the Romford Bull Bosch Army. His dad, the Chinese food expert, a.k.a. the titty man, he's seen 50 50 have gone. Eddie, you're saying 200. 50? 200. Did I say that again? 50 and 200. It's a lie inflated by four times. What else are they lying about? Well, how many drug tests have they buried over years? Why did Robin Reed have to find out 80, 18 months later that Kenny Anderson failed a dope test on a matchroom show in a British title fight? Why? Robin thought, well, I didn't really have it if I lose it to Kenny Anderson. But he still did have it in his head now because he's thinking, well, Kenny cheated to make weight by taking whiz amphetamine. You know, it'd be nice to be told, you know, straight away. Then you could have got him in for... Bacon belt. So well done, Eddie. But how many more have you buried? Just a question I'm asking. I don't see Cooks or Puppy Parsons or Michelle Phelps or any of them other lickers asking. Oh, it is what it is, isn't it? Just pointing that out. How dare we set, tell the truth or point any statistics out? It's facts, not fiction. Isn't that right, Judge Jordan? That talks for. I know you're watching. I get to hear things, eh? Look at my material. Uh, hook and fork. Some of the kids going on about eyebrows. People superimpo superimpose my face on here and saying that oh, my eyebrows are not level and this and that. Look, like I said before, and I'll say it again. I'm not like certain people at certain parts of the country that are going to have their eyebrows done and all that. Every six or seven weeks, I just shave them down to grade none or one or something. Their eyebrows, get over it. It's a bit like that one where I did a video years ago in my bedroom when I lived at Cunningsborough and I had all this aftershave on the table and I were only using one bottle for about a year and all others were just stood there and they got like bits of muck on them. <laughs> Up or whatever muck, the superimposed it and said, You need to start wiping them or use them. And you know what? You were right, mate. You were right, mate. So just stick them on the tap, don't you? But I think people have got too much time on their hands. Uh, yeah. uh, just like saying, 
Yeah, Eddie's saying that Conor Ben's headlining on the strip. It's like saying Willie Warburton's fighting Elvis Doob at the O2, in it, in London, or or Willie Warburton and uh, Elvis Doob are fighting in London, headlining in London, London town. But really, it'd probably be your call. You know what I mean? It's something similar to like Tony Bellew, in it, when he goes on about his loss to Adonis Stevenson and he's saying things like, uh, he's a world champion, he's this, he's that, he's a top, top amateur silver medalist. Now, when people say that, they'll say, Joe Joyce, top, top amateur silver medalist, or David Price, top, top amateur bronze medalist, or Robin Reed, top, top amateur, Richie Wood, or bronze medalist at Olympics. Well, yeah, Adonis Stevenson did win a silver Tony, but at the Commonwealth Games. Make sure you say it next time, Tony. When you say Adonis Stevenson won a silver or a top amateur, yeah, he was a good amateur, but not a top amateur. He got a Commonwealth Games silver. Okay? Make sure you say Commonwealth Games silver. Because then I can say, son of Buddy, a.k.a. Paul Smith, a.k.a. Smiggers Titties, Jim Royal, he got a silver, didn't he, at the Commonwealth Games after Pascal touched him up. So it is what it is. So speak the truth, Tony. Don't skirt around it. You got flogged. By a southpaw, just like Usyk, because you can't deal with southpaws. All right, the way to deal with southpaws, all you boxers out there, and this is from Carl Froch. The way you deal, deal with southpaws is this. 99% of southpaws are slick. Plus, it, the, the orthodox guy always looks a bit unsure when he's fighting a southpaw. They're always like, oh, it's a southpaw. You haven't, forget what your trainers are saying to you and game plans and that. Look, southpaws. Don't let them get into a rhythm like Robin Reed did against Calzaghi. He didn't let him get into a rhythm. He just kept hitting him with that right-hand lead all night. You've got to jump on him. Don't let him get into a rhythm because everything's the opposite of what you've been doing all your lives because southpaws are hard to spar, aren't they? There isn't any about. You've got to jump on a southpaw and take him out of his comfort zone. When a southpaw gets into his comfort zone, you know, it, it's an hard night's work. So, jump on them. Just go watch Frotch Boote. Pop, pop, bang. Little Porky, Porky's Corner. Top, top gear, top tip for you. So, let's have a look what else we've got. Uh, done that one. Big Joe Egan. He's still swerving me with his zoom, aren't you, Joe? What are you afraid of? What? What? Yeah. You know, don't you, Joe? You know. So it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> I forgot the names now, but they were an I'm a celebrity and they're a couple. He's called Neil. I forgot her name. But they were like politicians that were asking questions in House of Commons, weren't they, for uh, Mohammed Al Fayed. I forgot the names now. But they ended up weasels on reality TV programs, didn't they? Just brassing themselves off. Right. That's like you, Coogan, isn't it? Coogan there, on his interview, asking Eddie, oh, and Eddie, what's happening with Shannon Courtney? Coogan, why don't you tell everybody how you used to go out with Shannon Courtney on the quiet? Thought I forgot about that one, didn't you? Coogs. Hey, eh? It's like asking questions in the house and Eddie just battered it off, didn't he? He's like food and drink to him, isn't it? In it, couldn't you go in a bit better than that, Coogan? Uh, couldn't you go in a bit better for your bit of fluff or your ex bit of fluff? Couldn't you? Totally embarrassing that, Coogs. And that's not even allegedly, is it, Coogs? Give me a ring. Give me a ring, kid. Give me a ring. So, is what it is, isn't it? What's happened to Shannon Courtney? Well, it's over for an hour, isn't it? The 15 minutes is up. That's what happens in boxing. So is what it is, isn't it? You rub people up wrong way, you take a bit of time out, you get out your pram, think you're a diva, and that's it. And the promoters just move on to the next fix. Shannon Courtney is an afterthought now in boxing. That's the bottom line. Uh, that's about it, really. Listen, Eddie keeps going on about it. We've got 13 world champions currently. And he's stable. That's brilliant. But how many have you had from debut? Cordina, is there? 
Joshua, that's two. Who else is the from debut? How many is there that weren't from Robert McCracken conveyor belt up there? Because there'll be no more coming to you from up there, will there? Woo! How many more will be coming to you from up there, Eddie, at the EIS? How many? It's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward, Eddie, isn't it? He had a good little do up there, but how many really? A Coley, well, he's gone. Boatsy, he hasn't got there yet, and he's already gone. How many? Callum Smith? Jesus. What, are you going to go through weights all the way to heavyweight? Unbelievable. So, pinching fighters, pinching fighters. But it is what it is. Uh, flex! You're the body warmer, man. You inspired me, Flex, to get in shape. Whenever I used to ache in the gym, I used to say to myself, Flex says it's about consistency, like my pal Bunny says. You train every day, at least five days a week or six. You see the difference if you eat correctly. You were right, Flex. I just did it for seven days just to see. You're right. But you're not going to get me walking about with uh, a stick of celery in my hand. No, not unless I can dip it in a tub of Nutella or peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter, I prefer. You know, some pack. But, uh, but yeah, Dominic Ingle, speaking uh, properly and not having banter or roasting you, you're right. If you're consistent, you can get in good shape and you can see a difference in your body fat uh, and what you eat. So I've pinched a few of his meal plan ideas and they're really good. I'm not saying go out and buy his cookbook because I think he's a weapon. You know what I mean? Dom, get them teeth sorted. They look manky, mate. Cosmetic Beach, he'll take your money off you. Trust me. But you get what you pay for, don't you? All right. Uh, another thing, Flex, while I've got you on here, I'm not just going to big you up just because Frotch has uh, said he'd let you train him if you want with big, if you, if you hadn't been with Big Earn. Uh, stop going on about boxing and promotions and that. Put your hand into them millions that you've got. And you are a millionaire, Dominic. Put your hands in your pocket. I'll put a couple of shows on in Sheffield in your area instead of waiting for other people to put their hand in their pocket. All right. So I look at it. But uh, it is what it is. Is Flex going to be training Kel Brook for his comeback if he comes back? Mm, that's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? That's going to be a very interesting one. Uh, well, he's piped up on it. Yeah, this is what you've been waiting for, isn't it? He's on the thumbnail, isn't he? He's piped up. Big John Fury from the Fury Power Group. <laughs> I could be caught without this man here. Hey? I could be caught without this man. Carl Froch states facts, not feelings. Now, when you've got a CV like his, eight Olympians he fought, four of them undefeated. 11 wins of a world champion, four time world champion, MBE, Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame. And you're not getting Hall of Fame because you were taking a lot of fans to shows. Is that like Ricky Hatton or uh, getting countries to put the guns down like Barry McGuigan? We're talking about a proper, proper CV that is up there with Lennox's. It's up there, right? Big John Fury piping up, calling him a bum. This is a man, eight, four, and one. You've seen John Fury, haven't you? On my channel, on my most viewed video, getting iced twice. I had a DVD of him getting knocked about by Neil Malpass and Doncaster. I actually give it, John. I'm still waiting for me 25 quid off you for that, John. Keep it, mate. You never put your hand in your pocket in your life. You're a taker. But, uh, John, you're piping up like that, ranting off. Are you going to rant off about everybody who doesn't agree with you, John Fury? Are you going to call them all bums and threaten them and threaten to knock them all out? If you're going to carry off like that, what's going to happen if Tyson ever loses? What then? You're going to go into full meltdown mode. That's why Bricktop don't want you out there because you get too excited. And what you're probably going to do if you end up out there, you probably end up doing something or saying something stupid. 
and messing it all up for everybody. That's why they've not got you out there. All right, now I've heard behind the scenes they're trying to get you out there in fight week with three or four days to go, but we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. I very much doubt that you'll be let out there. I very, very, very much doubt it. So you're going to be fielding some proper questions next week. Or will people even ask you why you're not out there? Nobody's asking you so far why you're not there, are they? Why is that? Because they're scared to death because you're threatening and intimidating media people. That's why Bricktop don't want you out there. Or Andy Ayling. They don't want you there. All right, get it in here. They don't want you there. Tyson probably wants you out there because you're his lad. And any lad that doesn't love the dad is out of order, isn't he? But they've got a job to do, and that's piling millions up. Then when it's over, you can disappear, can't you, then? You can go and do what you want. Can't you? That's what you're saying you're going to do. But why is nobody allowed to ask you any challenging questions? For example, Steve Cunningham, what were he, 37? Vlad, 40? Wilder, 35 and 36? They're not exactly spring chickens, the four wins over world champions that Tyson's got, and Cunningham, a former champion, by the way. So... And while they're a former champion in, in, the, in Tyson's second victory. So it's not exactly a killer resume, is it? McDermott beat your lad. He got robbed. Frank Maloney had a heart attack at the side of the ring when the judges read the scorecards out. Terry O'Connor, the sole judge and referee on the night, because it was a 10-round English title fight, he was knocked out 6th of December 1977 at the Royal Albert Hall by Stan McDermott. John McDermott's dad. And it slipped through. It slipped through, didn't it? Everybody forgot about it. And then on the night, when it comes to the scores, O'Connor evened it up, didn't you, Terry O'Connor? Yeah. You evened it up, didn't you? Oh, but McDermott family. Everybody in boxing knows. Everybody. But why didn't Frank Maloney and all everybody else pick up on this when O'Connor got in the ring? Because people don't do their homework. They don't do their homework. Many a time I used to spot things like this when I worked for Dennis, and he would, he'd be like, God, I didn't know that. These millionaires don't know what's, what they're doing. If you said to Dennis now, Dennis, what's top five middleweights in UK? The British top five middleweights. You know, a glamour division, going, been going back for under, over 100 years. Dennis would have to go on his phone like that. Oh, hang on. Like that. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. So it is what it is, isn't it? I like to get my point across. Otto Wallen should have had a win uh, against Tyson. Should have been stopped. Don't even get me started with Sefa, Sefa Sarifi and that other dude who fought whose name I can't imagine. I can't remember. Chisora. He beat him two times already. Why did it need a third? Dylan White, a waste man. You know what I mean? Who came to lay down. And Garno in his debut as a boxer. You know, your CV's there to be picked apart, but you're running around telling everybody you're the big GK and the greatest ever and a goat. You're not a goat with four wins over old men. You're not a goat. Where's the next gen of guys? Usek's even an old man, now a small man. It's all carefully selected. Let's see some of these young guns in with you. Ali took him on, didn't he? Old and young. All the way through and next gens. He kept going through the next gens. He wanted to be a bad guy, Ali. Ali was a bad dude. Sonny Liston twice. Lloyd Patterson twice. Foreman. Beat Fraser twice. Ken Norton twice. The list is endless. Ernie Terrell. He was a world champion as well, wasn't he? Ernie Terrell, look. You can go on forever. Michael Spinks beat him, Olympic gold medalist. You know, Burbick were in Trevor Burbick, his last, his last fight that he had. He were an Olympian, Trevor Burbick. Ali was a bad cat. Bad dude who wanted to test himself. Tyson Fury swerved everybody. Didn't want to go near Lewis Ortiz, did he? Don't even get me started, Big John Fury. With the free drug issues, we know the first one, don't we? Like, right, well, wild boar. Been a wild boar, pop, pop, man. Second one, cocaine. Third one, a refusal. I don't hear anybody going on about that when they're saying he's the greatest of all time. If he beats Usek, he's still the Met top 15, in my opinion. No, top 20 if he beats Usek. 
Long way to go. He's way off Lennox Lewis's record. Way off. Joshua's CV and Fury's CV are both pish. Absolute pish. Guided. And they're still not even fighting, are they? So people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, but look how they're behaving when you question it. It's like, if you question anything in boxing against these people, you get your legs cut off, you get took off platforms, you're not allowed to work on Sky or Dazone or TNT Sports unless you play the game, right, with their fighters. It's all in-house bullshit. Or you get threats made against you behind the scenes. Look at me here. I get threats every day. And uh, I said, hey, look at this here. I said, no problem. We'll just check out security. Oh, it's going to come down here and do this and do that. Nobody ever comes. Oh, camera up and everything. I've even got these here today. When Wheaty gets here, don't you worry about that, Porky. Wheaty will sort that. Well, we're still waiting. Door on here and lock and everything. We've got to do things properly, haven't you? We've got to do things properly. And this is what I have to put away on a daily basis. So... Anybody can come down here anytime they want, but you've got to protect yourselves and look after yourselves, aren't you? In an industry where people, if they can't win in a conversation, they make threats against you. Threats and vileness, vileness. We have to save more now, all these emails. But that vile, I'm like, wow. And that long. I mean, I've see, I seen some of them that uh, Joe Gallagher gets sent. And they're quite, they're quite bad actually some of them who were getting sent years ago uh, told me about got kids in school and that were being abused there's kids at school now I ain't had that yet I ain't had that but some of them are on here it's unbelievable but it makes me a little bit stronger because I'm probably the wrong person to send that to because I've got a vile mouth and tongue myself Anna. and when you've been I'm not, I was never dragged up well, I, I was a drug addict, not now, but I was a drug addict and I've been in jail and I don't really care for for much, really. I don't, uh, not really much phases me. If you've been in prison, not, not, not much phases. That's why when I get up in the morning, I bounce out of bed because the worst thing about being in prison, anybody will tell you who's ever been in there. And I always have a soft spot for anybody who's been in Nick. That's why I got on really well with Dennis's dad is the worst thing about it is waking up in the morning. That's the worst thing, because you can escape, can't you, when you're asleep? The worst thing is waking up in the morning. So when I wake up in the morning now, I jump out of bed. Jump out of bed. But when you're in there, you just want to pull your covers over your head. You just can't face it if you get your head in gear. So keep the threats coming. They don't really bother me that much. I'm more bothered about the people who work here around me and people like you. Yeah, one at Queensbury lot. You know who you are in your crombie, your waste man. Bringing them next door, eh? Old bopper, eh? In your Chelsea boots and your crombie. You know what I'm on about. Bringing them next door. Take my family's name out, your noaf. Hey, yeah. What am I, a farmer? So that's what you're up against in boxing. If you don't go with the status quo, it's threats of violence and all the rest of it and ring your sponsors, and they're going to do this and going to do that, or they try and get your platforms took down, or if you work in the industry as a pundit, you get your legs cut off, you've got to go with scripts, it's fake news. Can you say this on camera? Well, why do I need to say that? I'm here for my expert analysis as a former world champion, some people say, well, what's Robin Reed and Clinton Woods? That's Brock. They'll tell you. These people are Olymp Olympic medalists and Four-time world champions and world champions for over three years, British titles and all that. They're there for their expert analysis. But when they go off scripts, like what did Clinton would say on an international feed going back to America? So, well, he shouldn't have been in with him. What's he doing in with him? That didn't go down too well, did it? Robin Reed said something similar. You're not allowed to say that, are you? We know what Carl's like. Carl just said what says what he wants, doesn't he? You're not allowed to say that that that's a bad match or this and that. You can't say that. So if these people are experts, who's got their jobs now? Well, we've got your Dave Caldwells, a.k.a. Bombay Daves and other people who stick to the scripts. Tony Bellew sticks to the script. That Dev San is probably one of the worst of the new breed that are out there now that are trying to 
put fake fake news out. Has anybody ever seen that Dev Sarnas interviews for Queensbury? I agree with Spotty Frank, uh, uh, Matcham, not on many things, but he's probably one of the worst that I have ever really, really seen. He is, and we're going to have to put up with him now for the next 40 or 50 years, or maybe maybe 20 years or something, but at least. But can you imagine we have to put up with that now? He is shocking. I can see why Joshua dismissed him. Oh, awful. Well, that's boxing for you, isn't it? So... Well, I think it's time to do some training now. And I'm going to play pool. We've got Nicky Smedley coming on at 12 o'clock, but I bet you don't. I bet you don't, Nicky. I bet you don't. I bet there's an excuse. So, all right. I've got some questions here for you, Nicky. We need to finish off what we started two years ago. All right. Go on, pop, pop, bang. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. That's 100 videos out there for the month. Members area is done. Production ones, they are they are fantastic. Some of the best stuff I've done for a while. Uh, Gavin McDonald, they're here if you want them. The look, the gloves that you had on when you put Lee Wood on Button Moon. And isn't it funny how Gav's career went? And look at Lee Woods now. Were Gavin badly advised by people around him? You bet you, because he didn't kick on from that didn't really properly, did he? Hey, bad advice. Lining other people's pockets will still be earning when you're 60, Gav. All right. <laughs> oh, before we go, Dennis. Dennis, stop crying saying I am a fight zone. Stop crying saying I am of them. There you go, Dennis. Fight zone and at on. But we all know it's a sinking ship, don't we? We all know it's a sinking ship. It's first t shirt I found this morning. So I'm not going to put a nice one on, am I? I'm not going to put a nice one on to go to gym, am I? To, to train, am I? Let's put a cheap bite on one on. The polo one that you give me, Dennis, so that's not bad. Okie doke. Go on, peace out. Max! Oh, before I forget, Max! You've got your board licence through, Dennis, and all that. Well done, but Max, you got any fights lined up? Is it all lined up, Max? Or are you just one of them that wants to be known as a boxer? Are you? Oh, pop, pop, bang. 